Right, thanks very much. Um, certainly they talk about big numbers in Queensland. Uh, Graham was talking about billions and we're focusing back on the agricultural recovery aspects. So I think most of ours are millions or smaller. Um, so what I'll do is I'll set the scene from last year. We'll cover some of the impacts of the events and we'll talk about the response, which is a huge effort uh, working with the communities and a range of government agencies, be they federal, state or local government. And you guys will be the judge of how clever the responses have been and, uh, as we said, happy to take questions later on. Right, just setting the scene um, for Victoria, certainly we are emerging from 10 plus years of drought. Uh, it wasn't your, your fault, Neil, but uh, you certainly, uh, uh, we were there. And uh, we st still had exceptional circumstances declarations in place for most of northern Victoria. So we had a nice promising season. We had the first spring which hadn't failed for quite a while. And uh, we were looking at above average rainfall in August, September. So. So the whole mood, the whole optimism of the state, uh, particularly in northern Victoria, was very, very positive. But also reinforcing that at that stage we had about 5,900 businesses receiving EC relief, uh, relief payments for, uh, for welfare. In terms of 21011, again a whole series of events starting off in August where we had uh, some flooding down in the southwest. Then we had a bit more up in the northeast and northern. Then we really got the big floods through December and January. And uh, just to top it off, we certainly had some more floods up around Muldura, uh, just about when we were harvesting grapes, just to really put the icing on the cake there and uh, mess it up for everybody. The big scene here, though, is this is riverine flooding. As about a one in a hundred year event, we had had people on properties around Bridgewater, Bears Lagoon, or that north central Victoria, who had never ever experienced this in their life or their parents' uh, parents' life. There was masses of water lying around for extended periods of time. So certainly in some of our hillier country, yes, the floods come, and we talk about floodplains. Uh, but never had we had water lying around um, for as long as it was in some areas and certainly around Kerrang and that. There was water lying there for three months and then they eventually pumped it out. And you could still, uh, still get that stench. So in terms of preparedness, uh, government's view was that it was unreasonable to expect individual businesses to have anticipated or prepared for such an event. Certainly in many other circumstances where there is some flooding on a floodplain, as, as we said before, the clear expectation is that would generally be in the, um, in the remit of the property owner to manage those risks. Picking up one of our fantastic bomb representations here, what we've got is the uh, rainfall from the 1st of September 2010 to the 28th of February 2011. And you'll see here that we this is the highest on, uh, on record right across uh, northern Victoria here. And this is the key area that we'll be focusing on later on through this north central period. Some of our flooding now has been up here, moving slowly down the Murray. But this is where the majority was with impacts uh, up here, as I said, from Muldura as well. The big issue around rainfall, yes, we certainly have floodings, but I'd also like to acknowledge that back in the Wimmera, in this year that those who did get their grain off or even parts of the Mallee, certainly they had a fantastic spring and some really good yields. But it's, so it's the timeliness of the water and uh, before we had uh, the annual rainfall that uh, Neil put up, but certainly that growing season rainfall and that and the effect that it can have in terms of subsoil moisture is absolutely critical. So there's certainly huge benefits uh, from good rains. In terms of the damage, over 3,000 uh, primary producers affected. Uh, the livestock numbers are there, 500, uh, quite a few poultry in a particular shed. They're not huge livestock numbers, uh, but they're certainly significant for the individual's concern. 123,000 hectares of grazing and field crops lost. So it was this fact that this water was lying around for a significant period of time. Also, uh, 
big damage in terms of fencing and also the fences adjoining national parks, sheds, buildings, etc. Uh, a lot of a lot of um, damage was done there. So that's the scene in terms of DPI as part of a whole of Victorian government working in with local government, state governments, and the federal government. Our initial area of focus was on the animal welfare and welfare support services. So this is about uh, animals stranded who couldn't get fodder, etc. And with the Victorian Farmers Federation, uh, there was an emergency uh, fodder drive and donated fodder was provided to those landholders with the state government uh, providing the cost of transport for that donated fodder. Quite a range of information uh, provided and support services. So as I said, there are about um, 3,300 farmers contacted. And out of those, there was over 2,000 referrals to other agencies, be it Department of Human Services, be it to Rural Financial Counselling uh, or, Rural Financial, uh, or Rural Finance Corporation. Access to grants and financial assistance, clean up and restoration grants administered by the Rural Finance Corporation as were some of the other long-term loans. Uh, and, and clearly this sector loss and damage in terms of feeding that into government agencies and more broadly. My colleague from Queensland touched upon it. So yes, we've got our, uh, our categorisation, if you like, of our natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements, which are arrangements which are in place between the Australian and federal government. So we have concessional loans in category B, and we had about 155 loans were improved in these Category B uh, loans. Clean up and restoration grants, that's up to 25,000 for those grants, administered by Rural Finance Corporation, about 4,500 grants. There are also uh, some grants in that scheme which we didn't take up in Victoria, such as fodder subsidies uh, and other things like that, because again, trying to put the right uh, policy drivers in place. And because of the truly exceptional nature of this, uh, category, category D was activated after our colleagues in uh, Queensland with Yasi, and there was a uh, grant and loan package proposed for where that has significant impact on a business, they had good chances of recovery, and it had significant flow on effects to the local community. 